Hey parents, my name is Kelly, and a huge congratulations on your little baby turning one. Now, I'm guessing you're here because you want to take some adorable cake smash photos on a shoestring budget. So I'm going to show you how I constructed this DIY backdrop for less than $30 for my son's first birthday cake smash. Okay, let's get right to it. First, you're going to need to find the perfect spot for your backdrop. Look for a place where you can hang the fabric around six feet high and also on non-carpeted flooring. So you're gonna hear lots of professional photographers say to use natural light when taking photos, but we're not professionals, we're just parents, and we're out here trying to do our best one day at a time. My best was simply using the overhead light in my dining room because my son's cake smash took place at 6 p.m. when the sun had already set for the day. So my advice here is to test out where your light source is coming from, whether from the sun in through a window or an overhead light above, and just make sure there'll be minimal shadows interfering with the photos and videos you take. I placed my backdrop in the corner of my dining room, so I simply shoved the furniture out of the way. The fabric is the biggest expense for this backdrop, so I did a ton of research and made sure I got something that was the right size, easy to clean, and affordable. I ended up with this 5x10 fabric backdrop for just $17, and it worked perfectly. Later, I'll also give you a few tips for getting out all the cake stains, because this will be messy. As a budget backdrop, I wasn't going to spend $40 or more on a frame to hang this from, so I used wood clamps from our garage to attach it to our window frames. Now this fabric does come with a rod pocket, so you can always hang it from a curtain rod, but mine were just a bit too high, so there wasn't enough fabric left over to cover the ground. Once the top was secure, I used painter's tape to attach the fabric to the ground. If you've noticed all the wrinkles, that's because I totally forgot to iron them out before shooting this video for you, but I did do it before my son's actual cake smash, and you should too. In fact, I have a tip here. If you don't want to bust out the iron, you can always throw the fabric in your dryer with a damp towel, like a small hand towel or something, and then steam out all the wrinkles that way. One way I made this backdrop so affordable was by simply using the plants around my house as decorations. While my son has a winter birthday, we're lucky enough to live in the beautiful Pacific Northwest where our winters are incredibly green, so I collected ferns, moss, and some random plant leaves to achieve an enchanted forest look. If you need a little inspiration for creating a natural backdrop for your particular season or region, I've added some suggestions in the description below, but also help others out by adding in the comments section what plants you'll be using for your little one's backdrop. Okay, so I am filming this in the summer because I just decided to start this YouTube channel, but for cohesiveness, I'm using all the same plants I collected in February for my son's birthday. While collecting decorations, make sure to only take one or two clippings from each plant because we don't want to kill anything. Also, this may seem pretty obvious, but make sure to avoid anything that's poisonous or contains thorns like these blackberries. Now, I'm going to make a wild assumption that you're not a botanist, so I've added in the description below a link to WebMD with common plants to avoid. For my son's birthday, I was able to easily collect moss from trees, but now that it's drying out in summer, I'll have to collect it from my front yard. And yes, our front yard is mostly moss, and it is awesome. Now that we have a bucket full of plants, we need something to hang them on. I made a banner using burlap flags and painted the word one out on them. This cost me $7 for the flags, of which I only used three of the 15, so I have plenty for future birthdays, and I used a cheap 50 cent acrylic paint for the word one. Looking back, I do wish I had chosen a more contrasting paint color to the plants, like red. It also would have matched his bow tie, which would have been so adorable. So just learn from my mistake here and be more aware of the colors you're choosing. After threading the flags onto a string that was about three feet long, I tied knots on the end and used these to sew the banner onto the backdrop. However, before you start sewing, make sure you map out where you want the banner to hang. The best way to do this is to grab your birthday kid, set them on the fabric, and take some mock photos. It's incredibly helpful to have an extra pair of hands for this too. Your partner can move the banner up and down until it's in the perfect location. Now you do not need to be a great sewer for this. Just grab a neutral colored thread and go back and forth until the banner is secured onto the backdrop. You'll be covering most of the banner up with the decorations you collected, so you don't need to worry about it looking perfect. Now I'll admit, I originally tried to just use tape to secure the banner onto the fabric, but this did not work at all, so don't even bother trying. However, masking tape worked surprisingly well for attaching the leaves onto the banner. I simply tied little loops in the masking tape, stuck that onto the back of the leaves, and then pressed it onto the banner. For other things like the moss, I was able to simply drape those over the thread. Just keep adding more plants and tweaking things until you're happy with the final result. 
If we have another kid, I may add more plants to the background next time, but I was going for a minimalistic look for this, and I also didn't want the background to be too busy and distract from my son having this great time and destroying his cake. Bear with me a few more moments because I wanna give you a few tips to make sure you have the perfect cake smash photo shoot. First, you'll need to choose the perfect time. Ideally, this is gonna be at least an hour after they've eaten so that they're hungry enough to taste the cake, and about an hour and a half before they need a nap or bedtime. Secondly, be sure to get down on the ground and take photos from your kiddo's level. You may want to grab a pillow to sit on for this. My son's cake smash was about 30 minutes long because he was having so much fun. Third, if you're using your phone to take pictures, take full advantage of portrait mode. It'll help soften the background while keeping your birthday kid the main focus. Lastly, make sure people or animals aren't walking in front of your light source casting shadows on the birthday kid. And a bonus tip for Samsung owners, if you haven't used your camera's single take mode, it's perfect for capturing moments that go by too fast. All you have to do is take a short 15 second video and AI will create various photos, collages, boomerangs, and clips from the footage. And this is by no means a sponsored plug for Samsung. Have you seen how many subscribers I have? I just genuinely love that setting. And if Apple has something like this, let people know in the comments. Okay, as promised earlier, my final tips now are for the cleanup. After the cake smash, you'll wanna soak the fabric and probably the clothes they were wearing in a tub with hot water and a scoop of laundry booster. Let everything soak for at least 30 minutes and then rinse it in warm water. Now immediately wash it with your laundry and it'll come out good as new. The main thing to remember is to not let the cake stains dry onto the fabric. Well, I hope this inspired you to capture some gorgeous birthday photos of your little one. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like. It really helps my small channel. I hope you guys have a great birthday photo shoot and I'll see you in the next one.